So we've also been introduced to a bunch of new literal syntax for creating objects. And this is just shorthand for allocating and initializing our objects and immediately giving them values. So we've already been introduced to the NS string literal syntax, which is at quote, and we can add characters inside of it. But we also have literal syntax for arrays, dictionaries, and numbers. And while not required, it's often advantageous to use these literal syntax because it makes our code much easier to read and it's actually faster to type. As you can see, for an array, all we need is at the at sign with two brackets as opposed to having right to write an array alloc in, in it. So we see here that we have one for an NS dictionary as well, at quote with curly braces, and notice the colon in the middle. There's one little caveat for NS dictionaries, which is the order in which you add key value pairs. So for the literal syntax, we add the key and then the value, which makes sense. However, when you do set value for key, it's the reverse when you create an NS mutable dictionary and you start setting key value pairs. So just keep that in mind as you start using literals. And we're gonna start using the syntax in our classes so that you can get introduced to this as well because it's very common as you read other code. So inside of our astronomical data.m file, inside of the all known planets method, we're able to see examples of all of this literal syntax that we just saw in our keynote slide. So first we see we can create an NS dictionary with the at curly braces, and we can set up key value pairs, where notice the key comes first and the value comes second. We have this colon in between. Notice that we're using commas in between each one of our key value pairs as well. We're also using our literal syntax to create our strings here, so we're using at quote, as well as NS numbers. Now, we're also creating an NS mutable array using our literal syntax, but notice that inside here, so we're creating an empty array here at with brackets, which would just create a regular array. We want to create a mutable array, so we actually have to use the method mutable copy, which gets called on our array object using the bracket notation. So this is a little bit less common, um, but it's certainly handy to know if you want to create mutable arrays.